Okay, so in this video, we will prove that P inverse AP equals D under a few assumptions. Now, if you recall, P is the matrix where the columns are eigenvectors of the matrix A, and D is a diagonal matrix where the entries along the diagonal are the eigenvalues of the matrix A. Now, this is not always possible, and I really want to stress this. It only works in some cases of the square matrix, and we will be assuming here that A is some n by n matrix. So here are the assumptions. So we have this n by n matrix. We assume that we have found, say, the n eigenvalues of A. So lambda 1, lambda 2, up to lambda n. And for each eigenvalue, we have found a corresponding eigenvector, say v1, v2, up to vn. Now the eigenvalues, if you recall, are simply real numbers. The eigenvectors are vectors in Rn, so they are columns with n entries. So they belong in Rn, which you can also write as R n by 1. So n rows, 1 column. And the assumption, of course, is that each vector is the eigenvector of the corresponding eigenvalue, which means that if we look at a times v1, this will be lambda 1 v1. If we look at a v2, this is lambda 2 v2. Up to, if we look at a v n, this is lambda n v n. This is simply the definition of an eigenvector eigenvalue pair. Now, let's look at how we construct p and d. D, of course, is the n by n diagonal matrix, where the entries along the diagonal are the n eigenvalues of the matrix A. So we have lambda 1, lambda 2, all the way down to lambda n. And because these are diagonal matrix, all the entries below and above the main diagonal are equal to 0. The matrix P is formed by using the eigenvectors for its columns. So the first column of P is the first eigenvector, the second column of P the second eigenvector, and the nth and last column of P the nth eigenvector. And now here is the assumption that is in, or the assumptions that are implicit in the given situation. We assume that for each eigenvalue we were able to find a given eigenvector and not only that but the resulting matrix P is invertible as we need to calculate P inverse. This is the key assumption as it is not always possible for any square matrix. But, and of course the discussion of well, when is this possible and when is it not possible is a bit complicated. So we'll just assume here that everything is nice. We have found the n eigenvalues of the matrix A. For each eigenvalue we have found the corresponding eigenvector. And constructing P in this fashion yields an invertible matrix. Let's now prove that P inverse AP is indeed D this diagonal matrix. So we'll start with looking at AP first. Well, let me just look at how we constructed P, where the ith column is the ith eigenvector of the matrix A. And of course, as both A and P are n by n matrices, 
the result of the product will also be an n by n matrix. And we can construct this matrix one column at a time. The first column of this matrix will be A times the first column of P. So AV1 is the first column of our new matrix, namely AP. To construct the second column of the matrix AP, we do A times the second column of P, AV2, and so forth, up to the nth column, where we do matrix A times the nth column of P, A times Vn. And this may look complicated, but because V1, V2, up to Vn are eigenvectors, the matrix will end up being surprisingly simple. A times V1 is simply lambda 1 V1, so a scalar multiple of V1. A V2 is lambda 2 V2, some other scalar multiple of V2, all the way up to A V N is lambda N V N, some scalar multiple of V N. Now think about why this is rather a simple looking matrix with respect to P. It almost is just P, except each column is multiplied by a scalar real number. So the matrix now is the first column is not V1, but lambda 1 V1, so it's just a multiple of the first column of P. The second column is lambda 2 V2 just the multiple of the second column of P, up to the nth column, lambda n v n, just the scalar multiple of the nth column of P. So this matrix is almost the same as the matrix P, except for each column being multiplied by some scalar. So if you think about this, because this matrix is so close to P, well, if we think of multiplying on the left by P inverse, it should almost cancel out and give us something very close to the identity matrix. So, this will be our next step, right? If we were to do exactly P inverse times P, this would give us the matrix I, which is, if you recall, the matrix where we have ones on the main diagonal, and zeros everywhere else. So now let's look at P inverse AP, so P inverse times almost P, but where the columns are replaced by scalar multiples of the columns of P. And let's see what comes out. So P inverse AP equals P inverse times the matrix AP, this is AP, the first column, lambda 1 V1, column 2, lambda 2 V2, up to column N, lambda N Vn. And as we have just pointed out, this matrix is almost matrix P. So we expect the product between P inverse and this almost P matrix to be almost the identity matrix. Let's think about this. When you multiply matrices, you can view the product being one row of the first matrix times one column of the second matrix. But when you multiply a row times a column, if there is a scalar multiple, you can factor it out as a scalar multiple and it will just stay there. So when you do P inverse times the first column of P, you get this column where the first entry is 1, everything else is 0. But now you won't get this column, you will get lambda 1 times this column. So you'll have lambda 1 and everything below 0. If you do the matrix P inverse, 
now times the second column of P, you will get this column. Well, if we do P inverse times this column, again, this is the same column as for P, except that it's multiplied by lambda 2. This being a scalar multiple can be factored out. So this column will not just be this column, it will be lambda 2 times this column. So everything is 0 except for the second entry, which will be lambda 2 times 1, lambda 2. And the argument is the same up to the nth column. If it were the column V, n, without the lambda, then P inverse times this column, being the exact column of P, would return the last column of I. Zeros everywhere but a 1 in the last entry. The only difference between this column and Vn is the scalar multiple, which we can factor out. So P inverse times this column will be lambda n times P inverse times the nth column of P, which is this column. So we will obtain lambda n times this column, which will of course be all zeros, except for the last entry being lambda n. And this is exactly a diagonal matrix where along the main diagonal are the eigenvalues of the matrix A. And this is the matrix which we called D. So this completes the proof. And so indeed, P inverse AP equals D. And of course, the result we were after, thinking of then computing high powers of the matrix A, was to isolate A. So we can then multiply on the left by P. So P, P inverse AP equals PD. But P times P inverse is I, I times A is A. So this cancels. And we can cancel the P on the right by multiplying both sides on the right by P inverse, which will give us that AP P inverse equals P D P inverse. But again, P times P inverse is I, A times I is A. This cancels. And so, the matrix A is P D P inverse. And this completes the proof.